my name is Quinn Thomas. I'm an assistant professor at Virginia Tech. I'm going to be talking about some work um, that I've done since joining the forestry department and thinking about how to use forestry systems uh, as a model for actually developing ecological forecasting and data assimilation techniques. And I'd uh, like to acknowledge my uh, co authors here. So to start, one thing that really got me interested about Southern Pine plantations is this intersection between theory and application. Um, I actually start on the right with the application. 16% of the world's timber volume comes from these Southern Pine ecosystems. Um, and it's the foundation of the Southern um, uh, forest products economy. But it really lends itself well to uh, advancing data simulation forecasting methods because, I mean, uh, there's a lot of data out there. Um, it's uh, a lot of data actually available across a lot of axes of environmental change, uh, both uh, you know, spatial gradients for, and also uh, kind of global change type experiments. And in the grand scheme of things, the forest ecosystems is relatively simple. In fact, in some cases, the same genetic individual is planted in multiple locations. Um, it, you know, short rotations, that kind of thing. So I think of this as a little bit of like a white lab rat for developing these methods in the context of developing it something that actually has an applied end user that's interested in uh, the quality of the, uh, of the forecasts. And so uh, I'm going to kind of walk through uh, this process that we've been uh, working on um, in the context of these Southern Pines. And you'll see some figures here that I've adapted from uh, Mike's book uh, for the kind of forecasting workflow. Um, and so the, the step one is to really build the, the, the model that's being used um, for uh, forecasting. And that involves you know, pulling together the data, the calibration of prior the theories. Um, and what I'm going to talk about, uh, what's really cool is that it's nearly 300 build plots go into the calibration, up to 20 years of data uh, on some of the plots, and uh, 11 dependent variables um, in, in this exercise. And uh, to kind of give an idea about what's really cool about the, the data that we're using is that it really spans a region where uh, there's you know, north-south gradients in temperature, east-west gradients in water, uh, but also manipulation experiments where uh, there is an unfertilized next to a fertilized stance. So you can start to isolate uh, what controls uh, various environmental responses. There's also the boot base site, which adds CO2. Uh, we have flux towers. There have been uh, drought experiments, but also the flip side of that is irrigation experiments. Um, all of this kind of exists across uh, the region. And this data was really pulled together through the PineMap project, uh, which is a USDA funded effort across a consortium of universities in the southeastern US. And I won't go through the list, but the power, one of the powers of a mechanistic process-based model is the ability to use, smartly use diverse sources of data because the model actually represents that, that term in it. Um, and there's a list of data that we're able to kind of pull in. And fundamentally, it's a time series analysis across space and time with multiple dependent variables. And uh, we use a simple forest productivity model. We're really focused on forest productivity, so we didn't really worry about soil carbon and things like that. Uh, but the important thing is that uh, it's a monthly model. Uh, so uh, that helps deal with uh, some of the computational issues that might come with running a daily or sub daily model. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of the hierarchical Bayesian state space approach that we use. A really good introduction um, uh, from Chris's lead off talk. But I also want to highlight uh, poster 15 from John Smith, who's a PhD student at Virginia Tech, that's talking about some really neat ways of estimating uh, the parameters um, in, uh, within a state space model um, and the kind of class model that we use here. And so you take your state space model, you get your parameters uh, and your process uncertainty, and uh, you enter into a forecast cycle, which we do two kinds of forecasts. We do the uh, kind of mid-century type forecast where you uh, are um, looking, your initial conditions are basically plant to pine forest, what does it look like in mid-century, and uh, kind of propagate all the uncertainty. We can do that for each uh, watershed across the southeastern US to propagate the uncertainty, which is the middle one, uh, at the bottom to get a distribution of uh, basically percent change in uh, the productivity for a uh, pine stand in that region. That then can go into, that went into a decision support system that was developed out of NC State as part of the PineMap project. Um, and uh, and you know, they work with stakeholders in the forest industry for information that they're uh, really um, interested in seeing. Um, but then we can move to more near term iterative forecasting 
by starting to simulate Landsat LAI to kind of uh, each year um, update the state so we no longer have to assume it was planted a certain year. We can intake the LAI, uh, which uh, is shown here, where uh, the bottom is kind of a site level parameter that's adjusted as more data comes in. The top gives an example of what uh, a prediction might look like if you didn't have Landsat information, didn't know how productive the site was. Uh, the red being observations and the uh, black being the, the kind of the mean and um, confidence intervals around the forecast. Uh, and then when you start to assimilate uh, Landsat LAI using a common ensemble filter, it really helps constrain the site level fertility parameter, which then sets up and allows you to uh, kind of start to uh, adapt uh, this kind of forecasting framework for a particular location over kind of sub decadal uh, time uh, scales. And so, uh, more information on the, the, the kind of studies that went in here are uh, available in these publications and um, you know, acknowledging funding from USDA and NASA for this project.